Hello, Canastota. I'm Sean Bassetta, Superintendent of Canastota Central Schools, and this is the weekly video update for Friday, February 26th. I'd like to start off by clarifying the situation with state assessments. As, it, uh, as many of you know, the Department of Education earlier this week announced um, that they would not be granting a blanket waiver for state assessments for the 2020-21 school year as they had for the previous year. However, they noted that they would be allowing states flexibility regarding the administration of these state assessments. In a New York State Department of Education statement, um, State Ed noted that the assessments would be used as a source of information for parents and educators to target resources and support rather than for accountability purposes for this year. So again, uh, based on this statement, from New York State Education Department, we now know that this assessment data will not be uh, used against schools for accountability purposes. The Department of Education uh, gives uh, further guidance to states, allowing them to extend the testing window, potentially even into the fall, um, allows them to make a, uh, uh, allowances for remote uh, assessment, um, administ test administration, and to actually even shorten the length of the assessments. That means that we now are awaiting uh, how New York State Education Department will interpret the flexibility they've been given from the Department of Education. The Board of Regents is scheduled to meet on March 15th and 16th, and, is, and it's uh, probably at that time um, that we'll anticipate decisions which will make uh, be made about what testing will look like for both three through eight assessments and regents exams. So again, to recap, we've learned that at least some assessments will be given, uh, but need further clarification of which ones, when, and in what form. Those answers will likely come in the next two weeks when the uh, Board of Regents meets in mid-March. And when we get answers, we'll share immediately with the Canastota school community. Shifting gears, I wanna talk about where everything stands regarding a full return uh, to school. One of the most frequent questions I get from people in our school community is, when are kids in grades seven through 12 coming back to everyday in-person learning? After all, hasn't the governor said that that's what should happen? In the past week, the governor uh, has uh, been making public statements talking about the need for students to be back to in-person school five days a week. And in fact, recent articles on Syracuse.com talked about how counties and schools had the power to bring kids back. So what would they do? Would they actually start bringing kids back? So let me be perfectly clear because this has been a very confusing issue because of all of the different entities involved, including school districts, counties, state. Um, we, from the very beginning, used the recommendations of the experts um, to make our decisions on how we operate. The governor himself has on numerous occasions dictated to schools what they can or cannot do. And the state has adopted uh, numerous recommendations that schools are obviously compelled to follow. To do otherwise would be tough to defend from the school's perspective. After all, how could we not follow the advice of the experts? Um, and in many cases, more than advice, the actual requirement of the experts. So to be clear, the state has not eliminated the six foot distance recommendation. If they did, we could have all students back uh, very quickly at the 712 level. Our local health department on numerous occasions has stated that it is not their decision to make, it is the state's decision. Therefore, we continue to wait for the experts to modify the guidance before we make any changes. I agree with the governor. It would be great to have all of our kids back at school but he or his agencies who work for him must give us the ability to do so first. If he or his Department of Health um, changes the guidance, we will immediately evaluate that guidance and bring back students um, to five day a week in-person schooling if that guidance allows. However, you can't keep the guidance the same as it is now and say kids should be back at school. You can't have it both ways. So it's, your move, it's, uh, it's really the governor's move. If he wants to have kids back in school, then he needs to issue specific guidance that allows for that to happen. 
as we've stated on numerous occasions, the reason our 712 students are not in school is because of the, uh, we have been adamant about following the six foot um, requirement, distance requirement, as we should. That has always been the responsible thing to do based on the guidance that we've received. Um, so again, much more to come on this. As you know, things change rapidly. Uh, in the event that guidance does change or a window is open to allow us to look at the distancing requirements differently, we'll certainly do that. Um, but it is uh, our lack of bringing 712 students back is in no means a reflection of us not wanting to. It's really a reflection of us trying to do the right thing based on the guidance that we've received. Um, so on a positive note, our students did return to practice this week for a number of our sports seasons, and it was great to get them back uh, to some level of normalcy. Starting next week, uh, some of the teams will actually start uh, uh, interscholastic competition for the first time in a long time. So good luck to all of our teams um, as they get into uh, further into the season. Um, with all the events and relating to sports and assessments and distancing, um, we'll certainly have a lot more uh, updates for you next week. But in the meantime, uh, happy Friday to everybody. Hope everybody has a great weekend and go Raiders.